Hi, this is FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. We're seeing many of the usual features of a corporate media drive to war. U.S. weaponry is being touted on the front pages and on the network newscasts. The TV generals are all in place. For many, it's a question of when, not if. The warships are ready, the targets are chosen, limited cruise missile strikes against airfields, artillery, and the regime's command and control. The clock is ticking on U.S. military action in Syria. The White House says a decision is near and U.S. warships are in position. And the rest of the world is also joining the debate about what kind of action and exactly when. The goal to stop a man using brutal chemical weapons 5,000 miles away. As you just heard, plenty in the media are once again accepting government assertions as if they are facts. Officials say they have evidence that the Syrian government was responsible for what appears to be a horrible chemical attack in a Damascus suburb. But when headlines talk about intelligence that is based on satellite imagery and intercepted messages between enemy forces, it's hard not to think back to the Iraq debacle. Too many in the corporate media apparently have failed to learn the lesson to be skeptical. There are some outlets that are expressing skepticism, though. This August 29th report from AP says the intelligence linking Syrian President Bashar Assad to the alleged chemical weapons attack is no slam dunk. It is thick with caveats, despite what we're hearing from U.S. political leaders. But for some, making assertions about Syria is just the beginning. Here's NPR reporter Mara Lyason. Uh, it's, this is not just about chemical weapons. It's not just about Assad. This is a proxy war. Iran, who is developing its own weapons of mass destruction, is currently backing the Syrian regime, and it is watching very carefully to see what the U.S. does. Now, she would seem to be referring to nuclear weapons there, about which, once again, there are unsubstantiated claims about what Iran might or might not have. There is no evidence that justifies treating these allegations as facts, though. Getting the facts straight is one thing, of course, but what about the debate over U.S. military intervention in Syria? We know the public is overwhelmingly opposed to the idea, but when CNN wanted to showcase the kind of left-right debate they're going to have on their newly rebooted crossfire, we got a passionate call for more war from the right. We should absolutely intervene to stop the genocide of more than 100,000 people. We should absolutely intervene to stop al-Qaeda and Islamic extremism from jihadizing yet another ground? conflict. And from the left, we got a call for more war, a different kind. This president has now said there is a red line. It was not clear before whether the line was crossed. It's crossed. He's moving forward. I think we need to stand behind this president and send a clear message to, uh, uh, to Assad that this type of behavior is not, not acceptable. The new crossfire sure seems a lot like the old crossfire. And finally, do you remember the Tea Party movement? We haven't heard from that right-wing uprising in a while, but it looks like the Wall Street Journal is trying to change that, running with this August 28th story about the big Tea Party comeback. The story reads more like a press release than a news article, though. The IRS scandal referenced in that headline is the driver of this story. You might remember back in May, there were huge headlines about how the IRS was targeting the tax-exempt applications of certain Tea Party groups. But as the weeks went on, more facts emerged that muddied up that storyline considerably. The targeting was much broader, and it apparently included left-leaning groups as well. For most of the press, the scandal storyline more or less vanished at that point. Apparently someone has forgotten to tell the Rupert Murdoch-owned business paper. So what's the evidence then for this big Tea Party comeback? Public opinion polls suggest the controversy has helped the movement's image, the journal reports. They then cite exactly one poll to this effect, taken in June amidst all of that hype. It found just 26% of the public had a positive view of the Tea Party. That's hardly much of a comeback. There's also a chart showing increased donations to the Tea Party Patriots group. It also stops in June, leaving the article's claim of a rebounding movement sketchy at best. Certainly, the Wall Street Journal can editorially support the Tea Party movement if it chooses. There's a separate page in the newspaper for that. I'm Peter Hart. This was FAIR TV.